Hello, everyone. Welcome to a wonderful new episode of Making an Impact. And a big hello to all 98 viewers brought to us by our friend, the X Division champion. Thank you very much for joining us. This was a hell of an impact week to join us for. I am the foe, Cody Defoe. This right here is my wonderful, fabulous, beautiful co-host, the natural Astrid Pizarro. How are you on this Thursday, Astrid? Doing better now that we watch Impact and that amazing main event, to be honest. How are you doing? Exhausted. Extremely exhausted. I, I feel exhausted for those men. That was a main event and a half. I did not expect that. I did not see that coming. Um, we're going to get into that. We're going to get to that main event. I feel like that's going to just, just take the majority of our time on this show today because there's so much to be said about what happened today. Um we're going to kick it right off at the top, though. Um, I managed to catch Before the Impact. Did you manage to get through the Before the Impact? Yeah, I was watching your favorite person in the world. <laughs> uh, the wonderful Trey, as he was promoted. Um, not not Trey Miguel. He is Trey now, according to the BTI promo graphic. Um, was on BTI today in a kickoff match against the Jason Hotch. Uh, pretty strong match between those two. Uh, what did you think out of out of that? I I loved it. It was like uh, I forgot that I didn't watch until the end. But if you watch it from like before the impact, like it was supposed, like I was supposed to, definitely feels like a good opener to like the impact show as a whole tonight. And to see so much like of Trey's character now being cocky, confident, I I love seeing that. Uh, and there was a part too that I think he was going to do a dive and then he looked at the fans and went like, nah, I'm not going to give you guys what you want. <laughs> uh, so just seeing those little things from his character, I feel like it showed off all of his character during this whole match. And that's what I loved about it. But Jason did incredible too. I feel like it's very entertaining. Yeah, no, Jason Hodge is, he's come a long way. Um, I, I know I spoke highly of him in his first match against Joe Hendry. Uh, this was another good exposition for him where he didn't look out of place against the champion, which is a good thing to be. Um, my first thing I picked up on was new music for Trey, though. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get on that, we will say hello to the comments there. <laughs> Barry, nice to see you as always, friend. Thanks for popping in. Um, <laughs> I can imagine no ad breaks in that main event would have mm. been quite brutal to try and get through. So uh, good on you, friend, for, for holding <laughs> it in and going for it. And our friend <laughs> Carl over at Turnbrockle Studios, the top 98, we're here for you. <laughs> new music Astrid uh, from my perspective I'm not sure if I like it yet um, I don't hate it I think it might grow on me how did you feel about it I mean I enjoyed it so far sorry I, I know you may not be but I'm a fan of Trey and his character I'm just saying if you haven't checked it out go on Cody's Twitter I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> I, I did appreciate that there's a new aggression from Trey this week yeah. and a little bit more swagger um he really kind of carried himself really different it felt like a different tray we've seen mm -hmm. the slow movement towards this the uh and they touched a little bit of it on commentary to the accepting the dq finish over speedball the spray painting uh black taurus in the eyes just a little bit of this progression um this week, he really kind of kicked it up and took it to that next level. He he didn't have his usual fast-paced offense. He wasn't going for the high risk or the high-flying moves. As you said, there was the spot where he kind of pretended and fed the crowd to make him think he was going for the leap and then stopped and kind of waved it off. And no, no, you're not getting that from me. <laughs> um, there was a point where he had Hotch in a submission move and was counting along with the ref on the five count. Um there was a brain buster he hit that was absolutely vicious looking like the way the way Kazarian crumpled under Josh Alexander's C4 Hotch crumpled under that brain buster um it, it was it was a different feel to a Trey Miguel match yeah. and not in a bad way it it felt like mm -hmm. it really suits him right now yeah, <laughs> I love Harry's comment though. Uh, to be honest, Trey acting angry does make me laugh a bit. Still, a great wrestler though. It just, yeah, I like the attitude change though. And you can not only can you see it like from the entrance change to like the way he was wrestling, how different it was, and even at the end when he just won over Jason, uh, just the way he just did the spray paint over him like he did with the title too. I'm telling you, champ, get an action figure with the championship with the spray paint. I would like to get one, please. Can we have it? Please. 
I, I would have bought it last week. I'm not so certain I will support at this point, but if he brings me 98 viewers, I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, the other thing I, I picked up, too, is it, it seems we've moved away. No, no more Meteora for Trey Miguel. He won this one with the Lightning Spiral. Um, he's been moving away from the Meteora ever since losing the title, and it, it feels like it just fits with the progression all along as well. That, you know, the high-flying Meteora move is something that more of a a fan favorite would go for, whereas somebody that's just about winning isn't going to go up and try and please the crowd. You're going to hit the most powerful move you can, and and that's what the lightning spiral definitely feels like now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the win. Um, Brands Hotch with the TM. We go to the, the main program after this, uh, starting off and kicking it right up where we left off last week. Um, before that, Barry commented to, uh, I, I agree, I do believe Jason Hodge will mm -hmm. be a big character here in the next year. I feel like he's somebody that um, we're just scratching the surface with that will really kind of find a place and make a name for himself in the next little while. Mm -hmm. Picking up where we left off last week with, with Diener. We get kind of a recap of the end of last week's prison scene with Eric Young. Crossed over and blended together with a little bit of a promo from mm -hmm. Diener. Um, talking about violent by design was it, it was not a group it's not a faction it's a movement and it's a movement that has now been cleansed in the blood of its designer and talking about um, they're coming for revenge against Sammy Callahan basically like calls mm -hmm. out Sammy that will see you in the ring felt like a a new feel to an old group. Like it didn't feel like a new group or a different group, but it mm -hmm. felt like just the evolution of the violence. And it, mm -hmm. it put angels and con in that light. It really let Diener shine in that role as the new mastermind of the group. And it gets me excited. And, and we'll get into it a little bit later mm -hmm. with the match that ended up coming out of this as well. But it gets me excited for where this is going because I feel like it actually could be a really big positive for Impact. Yeah. I love little things of, like, uh, he said it was a, a movement with the designer at the helm and, and seeing those lines. And then, like, the movement has been reborn. Uh, the part that I like, like, the line that I like the most, though, is when he says, oh, Sam, like, when Sammy was facing EY, he says, you found the snake, you cut off its head, but it threw... Uh, it grew three heads instead. Um, I love that visual because I'm a big Hercules fan and there's a scene that he does that like, he cuts the head off of one of the things like that and it comes out to grow even stronger with more heads. So I just saw that in my mind. But um, I love that change between them and that transformation that we got because it was even something as simple as the video package just showed that transformation between the group and just like we went from like what happened last week to what's happening now. Um, did it, it does take a while for me to like think about Khan as like somebody like badass I just keep seeing as, as this guy with the uh as the rat guy from NXT and the cheese yeah I'm not over that yet so I had to it'll take me a while to get used to it, this visual of him uh, but other than that I love how they look and I love how they represented from themselves in this video package like it was exactly what needed to be done for them to show that change in the group uh the thing I had me curious though because that's what they announced Sammy versus Kong for tonight but I kept thinking, okay, I know Sammy is more like a lone wolf. He doesn't really hang out with a lot of people. So I wonder who's going to really team up with him later on. Because I know this is one of those things, like it starts with him, like probably going again against all three guys one-on-one. -on -one. But I feel like towards the end of this, he's going to have to find two other people to actually do the six man at some point. So it made me wonder who's going to be those two people to team up with him eventually. Yeah, it it'll be interesting to see where it goes because we're going to have to have some kind of crossover at some point and somehow involve other people into this, but there's nobody else really in line with violent by, de by design right now to get there. I mean, you could go the route of slowly picking off everybody that had defeated EY at the end there, which would be Sammy, which could be Moose, which could be Macklin. Like everybody was kind of involved in those feuds with Eric Young near the end of the designer um, mm -hmm. that you can kind of go back and revisit those with Diener at the helm now and um, play them a different direction. So it, it'll be really fun to watch, I think. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did have thinking out of this, though, is I feel like Khan definitely could have used a cleansing to get rid of all of his failure when he was part of the Ascension. 
<laughs> hey, they were nice, okay? I was like, even the seals that were nice to me. They told me my name was pretty. I won't have to get it. They about were it. violence by design in NXT, and then they went to the main <laughs> roster and they caught the failure disease. So. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, this is something I wanted to highlight where he's coming because it's something that I noticed too. Nothing in the yellow outfits. There was no hoodies. I thought they were going to probably show the people within the hoodies like the way it was happening towards the end with EY. And I noticed there was no like sign whatsoever of him having those like followers that it happened with EY before or the yellow hoodies. No signs of that. So I wonder how how that's going to play off later on. If it's something that they're going to say, oh, this is why EY wanted versus what we're doing now. Uh, so it's, it's like one of those little things like I feel it will probably highlight sooner or later, but I thought it was interesting too. Yeah, it kind of feels to me like Khan and Angels were kind of the perfect design kind of characters and like everybody in the hoodies were the designed, but they slowly had to weed them out and find the those without the failure within them. And that's where they came up with Angels and Khan, which is an interesting philosophy since I'm pretty sure Angels was losing a lot in AEW and Khan was definitely losing a lot in WWE. But um, this is Impact. Their, their records in other companies don't matter. There's no memory of that. I mean, there's there's memory, but we just don't <laughs> We don't care about whether they were winning or losing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after the promo open and the kickoff opening music, we got right into the business. We got the tail of the tape for Heath and Rhino versus the Motor City Machine Guns and then jumped straight into that match. Um, somehow, it, the thing always on the tail of the tape that catches me at this time was somehow this is another first time ever match, which seems mm -hmm. really surprising to me given that both of these teams have been in impact going around for a while now that um to have this a first time between these two two teams is an interesting one and yeah, then that's it was something the that i noticed too in the graphic yeah sorry uh, uh that's something that i noticed in the graphic too like the first time i thought it was that feels weird at this point yeah also the fact that it's the njpw strong tag team champions versus the impact tag team champions so champion versus mm -hmm. champion with only one of the belts on the line at that point mm -hmm. um and then early on in this match i noted too is where they made official that sammy callahan versus Khan was going to be happening tonight yeah the match itself i kind of thought it was more of just a slow and methodical tag team match with nothing really that stood out did you have any anything else like that you thought not of that it? not that stood up but something that just i i kept noticing and thinking about is just this is the match that you notice the machine guns changing their style because of their opponents i feel like the last couple of weeks when they had them in those like high flying you know high speed kind of matches and the people that go against is a lot of double teams. And I feel like this time they kind of focus on like not quick tags, but kind of similar quick tags. It was there. Uh, but they focus on like go, like targeting Heath and keeping Rido in the corner. And those like, I feel like the movement in the speed was a little bit slower, focusing more technical side of it, more submissions and little things like that. And it's like kind of like they notice like this is not like the other teams that we face. So we got to change it up a little bit when we face them now, especially because we have the titles on the line. So I noticed that type of change in like the scenery of the match as a whole. So, and then they, I forgot who mentioned it in commentary. It's like, oh, usually we see like a high speed uh, with the machine guns. And I feel like this time they're going to, in a way, like a little bit slower for their opponents. And towards the end, when we get like the hot attack from Rhinos, when you're like, oh, now it's like, it kind of picked up a little bit when Rhino got tagged in. But when he was there, it was kind of like a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, I noticed like they, they, they like adjusted and adapted to their opponents this time around. Yeah, the Motor City Machine Guns and Shelly and Saban in general, just in singles action as well, they seem to be really, really good at adapting their offense to their opponents. Um, as Barry throws up here, the Machine Guns are one, are one of, if not the best tag teams in the world right now at, at being able to adapt and making others look good. I, I haven't seen a bad Machine Gun match at this point, which is saying something because they've faced pretty much everybody in the Impact tag mm -hmm. scene at this point. Yeah. Um, I, I did note that commentary spent a lot of the match talking about 
the tag team experience and how long Shelly and Saban have been teaming and how they just have so much ability to work within the tag rules. Like they pointed out at one point where they had, I think it was uh, Saban was on the outside and holding uh, Heath's leg while Shelly was talking to the ref and the ref wasn't stopping. Like the ref saw what Saban was doing, but he's still kind of in the corner, gave them a couple seconds and then Shelly came in and attacked and took control back. And Mm -hmm. just little things like that where they really pointed out how the machine guns used every piece of the tag team offense to work with their partner and work within the constraints of the rules Mm -hmm. to the maximize their abilities and their output and it was weird in a way because Mm -hmm. trying to put that veteran experience and that tag team experience for the machine guns as much as it applies to them they were almost trying to put it in such a way that like Heath and Rhino's experience didn't matter but Heath and Rhino Mm -hmm. have been teaming Mm -hmm. all over the world for quite a few years now too that to try and play that tag experience versus lack of experience between two veteran teams seemed a little wrong yeah and talking back to when you said about taking advantage as well it's like when alex had the submission on heath and even with the fight count when Heath was holding onto the ropes and the referee's like one two and then Alex is just like hanging out, just like, yeah, I'm gonna take advantage of the of the count. And when it when it reaches the count, then I'll let it go. And I feel like sometimes we don't see that really often from them. So that was interesting. And when they and they kept pointing it out in commentary, just like, oh, look at him taking like real advantage of that fight count instead of usually like letting go when most people do at the beginning. Um, the only thing that for this match. I wasn't expecting the major players to come in like this in a way. So I was like, oh, this, I feel like it's a good pacing to it. I was entertained and it just threw me off when they came in. Like, I, I don't know why I didn't think about it. But at the same time, I just kept thinking, it makes sense for this, something like this to happen as well. But it just like, it totally caught me off guard when they did. I was like, wait, what the heck just happened? And it took me a moment to like think about it. Oh, okay. And then I thought they, they did a DQ. And then, well, I guess because they hit both teams, they just put it to a no contest. But that was really interesting because it gives us the excuse of, like, we'll have the match again next week. But it's like, okay, why, if you do it next week, who tells you this is not going to happen again, though? So it's like, I wonder if they're going to end up changing the stipulation between the match because it's happening next week again as a rematch. But what if the major players do it again just because they want to be involved in this? See, I saw that pop up later in the show, but... Tom and Matt never actually acknowledged that it popped up again as a match on the coming next week. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if it was just a graphical error or something, because it it does seem weird that we would go right back Mm -hmm. to the same match after that happened. I know Mm -hmm. we talked at the Overdrive pay-per-view as well. I pointed out that with Saban and Shelley coming down and sitting ringside and ultimately kind of distracting the major players and them losing to Heath and Rhino at the, the PLE that... I pointed out that I thought we could be heading towards a triple threat tag team match here, which definitely feels like it's the route we're going to be heading now after this Mm -hmm. week, that um, these three teams just have a lot of um, different stories playing around through the triangle that Mm -hmm. I feel like we've got to go a route where we've just got all three teams in the ring at the same time and let them get it out. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, at the end of the match, it did go no contest, and it, it almost looked when um, Myers and Cardona came in the ring that they almost tried to time it with themselves, that they hit mm-hmm. both teams at the exact same time to make it a no contest. Mm-hmm. So um really felt like that's what they were going for, is to just not have a winner at all. Yep. We got a quick overdrive recap just to refresh everybody on what happened between Josh and Bully Ray after the Kazarian match. Um, If you haven't heard it, go back a couple weeks on Making an Impact and check out one of our past recaps. It was uh, quite the shocking turn at the end of overdrive there, but we go right from that, jump into Scott Demore and Josh Alexander talking backstage. This was an interesting segment. It went from like two different Mm -hmm. ends of the spectrum. We started Mm -hmm. out with Josh talking about how, you know, all he heard from the time Bully Ray won the Call Your Shot was to look out and watch his back, and he never really cared about Bully Ray. He just saw him as just another challenger. He tried to tune out, and everybody was telling him he didn't care. He was just waiting for the challenge to come up, and he let his guard down, and that's why his wife got attacked. Uh, So tonight, he's going to do it his way. And he's going out to the ring and he's doing it. And Scott says, you know, I don't agree with it, but you got to do like what you feel is right. So go ahead. 
We don't know at this point what he's going to do. We just know he's going out to the ring to make something happen. As Josh walks off screen, Johnny Swinger and Zicky Dice walk into Scott Moore's <laughs> office. And anytime Johnny, like Swinger and Zicky are on your screen, you know it's just something shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Johnny Swinger says he wants a title match. Uh, Zicky Dice starts trying to tell Scott Demore some kind of pitch he has to make this happen. No, wait, wait. It's a two and a half hour elevator pitch. Yeah. Which by definition shouldn't take that long, but sure. <laughs> Scott tells Swinger, you want a title match? Sure, I'll give you a title match, but you got to win 50 matches first. And I got flashbacks to Jim Carrey that I sent to Astrid in our private chat before the show of Johnny Swinger. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <sighs> I just like, I think I, when I thought about this visually, I kept thinking it would be funny if he starts picking up wins every now and then. But he's like at 49 and doesn't reach that 50th that he needs to get the title match. It's like, this will be funny to see it happen, though. Like every couple of weeks, like, oh, this is my, my first one, second one. And it's like, and just when you think he's almost there to get that 50, he doesn't. And I'm like, that will be so funny to just see it play out on TV, though. Well, he didn't say it has to be 50 in a row, right? So I'm wondering if we're going into a position now where we're going to have Swinger in squash matches over the next however many weeks to try and put him in a position. <laughs> oh my god. Or <laughs> he comes just... out and just starts beating local talent at every taping that they have. Oh no. I'm just... I just kept thinking about it. It's like, thinking about it just made me laugh. It's like those 50 ones and it, if it were to happen... Um, but yeah, I thought that, that part was funny the way he's like, I'm gonna do an elevator for just two and a half hours, and Scott the was like, two and a half. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> and the way he reacted to it just made me laugh. Um, but like going back to the Josh thing too. Um, I like that more than anything. How many times and how many people had to warn Josh about this? And he's like, I didn't care. What? <laughs> it's like, are you serious, dude? He's like, Did you not know who bully Ray is? How would you not care? He just started um, but, tuning everybody out. He he kept hearing the same thing week in, week out. He's just like, I don't care what you have to say. I know he's a challenger. I know he's coming for my title. Stop talking to me. And then he's like, I let, I let my guard down. No, really. I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, but I, I like the part, too. My favorite part of this whole thing was when uh, Josh was like, yeah, I want to do this. This is my plan. I want to go out there, like, call him out. Uh, give him the title match tonight. And even with that, he'll still get the match at Hard to Kill. And Scott's like, I don't agree, but sure. And then they shake hands about it. But I just like the way he said it. It's like it shows that respect of, like, even though I don't agree with you, but you're the world champion and you want to do it your way, so I'll let you do it this way. Uh, so I thought that part was interesting, like, the way he just respects his world champion like this, too. Yeah. I said that decision, even though he disagrees. I think this is this is a sign of the turn in Scott Demore we're seeing. Because when it was Moose as the champion and Josh wanted to go out and make it happen... Scott was trying to protect and protect and protect. And now with Josh as the champion, Scott's still trying to protect Josh in this case. Mm -hmm. But it, now it's turned on the other foot where he's so angry at Bully for deceiving them all that his way of protecting Josh is now by letting Josh handle it himself. Mm -hmm. Um and, and I mean, Scott has been pure gold through this story now as well. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, the the rage pop bubbling up in him and turning and, and coming into this fruition that I think we're, we're set for a solid emotional story throughout mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Uh, quickly go back to Barry's comment here. Uh, I understand, Barry. I've been in the comments too. I know it's sometimes it's hard <laughs> to type out when you get a long, a long breath going there. Um, but yeah, the, the three tag teams in the picture, Bullet Club, Shira and Sing, Decay, Violent by Design, Yu Yu and Delirious potentially, Aussie Open, Swinger and Dice. We do have a very deep tag division in Impact mm -hmm. now, but the, the tag team picture for the men doesn't seem to be in any kind of state mm -hmm. of question. There's a lot that can happen and a lot going on. And, you know, we got Bullet Clubs over in a new Japan right now. Shira and Singh were on the Overdrive open match, but haven't really been teaming quite yet, but we're going to get there. VBD's got a brand new tag team that can enter the picture at any time. 
uh, Crazy Steve and Black Tarus are kind of tied up on the X Division side right now, but they could also enter themselves into that ring. Yuya and Delirious put on a great te- teaming when they teamed together a couple weeks back. Uh, Aussie Open's kind of in and out and around as they see, mm-hmm. and Swinger and Dice, I mean, are, are the comedy bit, but they can still hold their own in a ring when they need to. Yeah. Uh, after the backstage with Scott and Josh and Zicky and Swinger, we got a photo shoot with Mickey and Jordan, which seems odd for opponents to be having a photo shoot together, but okay. Um, what did you think? I'll, I'll go to you first on this one, Astro. What did you <laughs> take away from this photo shoot? What did you think of it? That was so random at the same time. You know, I'm the kind of person, like I say, when we watch NXT, I like when anything happens that's like outside of their like, ring area. So it was... Also interesting to see a photo shoot happening, but it was like when I think of a sh- photo shoot happening between opponents, I don't see them doing the photo shoot at the same time. <laughs> but just like um, that part was interesting. And, um, I like the part of like the little things they said to each other as the photo shoot was happening because Mika's like, well, I want that title. And then uh, he's like, don't, she's like, don't take it easy on me. Don't treat me like a charity case. Like I want this and I've earned this. So I want you to like basically go all out with me. And uh, I like how Jordan's like, like, I was not going to take it easy on you. And uh, she said, I respect you enough to retire you. And I was like, oh, my God, this match is going to kill me. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was just interesting setting with the photo shoot itself. But And I feel like that was the only thing we got from them. And I was like, I want more. That wasn't enough for me. Um, but it still is one of those things like it's still like it gives me more, more motivation to watch it. And just, even though I'm freaking out about it at the same time, but yeah, I'm excited for it though. What did you think? Yeah. Don't sleep on this match at all. No. This Mickey and Jordan are going to go all out. They Mickey is 100% going to be the epitome of hard to kill. Um, she is someone that's going into this match with everything to lose. And Jordan is somebody with everything to gain. Really. She's got the title, but she can, boost her own reputation in that same way. This is just another notch in her belt. She is somebody that is right now the top of the knockouts division in Impact. Everything she is touching is turning to gold. I am so excited for this. The photo shoot session was kind of a unique way to go about this, but the fact that they are opponents of respect puts it in a different perspective where you can go into those positions with somebody that you respect and you know the kind of similar to Kaz and Josh last month where they're teaming together and they're not at each other's throats they just acknowledge the fact that we're going to be opponents we're going to go at each other when we get the time in the ring but for now we don't have to hate each other leading up to the match yeah that's very true um, all of our knockout segments in this show kind of came back to back here because after Mickey and Jordan, we went right to the ring and had Savannah Evans versus Taya Valkyrie. Ooh, don't do that to me, Barry. <laughs> we talked last week about Barry about my my idea on possibly Mickey turning heel to keep her career alive. So I'm standing behind that. I I do think that's where this is going. That Mickey's going to win the match by turning heel. We'll see where I'm at when we actually get to predictions the day before Hard to Kill, but that's where I'm at for now. Yeah. Savannah Evans versus Ty Valkyrie. I had it as a strong match. Slower and awkwardly paced at times, mm-hmm. but definitely made Savannah look really strong as she wins clean over a top knockout and former knockouts champion in Ty Valkyrie. Um, with Tasha just kind of looking on from the outside. And the only time we really saw Tasha even pop up was just to say, no, no, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me like that she looked like she was so incognito for a, a few moments. I forgot she was there in the camera shop. We had it from like the ring going out and then I could see her in the background. I was like, I forgot she was there. <laughs> like I really forgot because I didn't see like, usually I feel like her presence is known at ringside and this time around it wasn't compared to usual, which is strange for her at the same time in her character. But it's like, I forgot you were there up until that shot happens. Uh, but yeah, just like, I feel like it was a good way to showcase Savannah, which is a good thing. I don't feel like she doesn't get showcased often. We usually get the highlight on Tasha. So it was nice to see that happening too. Um, but yeah, just like I feel like it was a good way to like show her as a powerhouse, and it just like they went on. It wasn't just in the ring; it was on the outside as well. 
um, there was two uh, a moment on a sequence that they had that Taya is running to the corner where Savannah is standing up at, and Savannah is gonna hit her with the boot, and she actually like falls down. I think before Savannah hits her with the boot, and then as she does, it's also like standing up, and she's like st standing up, and then Savannah is coming at her with a clothesline, but she's clearly standing up and looking at her like she had enough time to react to it, but she still fell down and didn't do anything, and I was like. I don't know if I like that though the way it would like it's, see it, you can see it on TV, uh, so that part kind of bothered me a little bit. But uh, other than that, I feel like this is a good way to like not only showcase Savannah but get them that title match rematch again and just like here we be one of one of the champions so we can get that rematch now. Um, so I wonder if like maybe during the match we'll get a little bit more from Savannah when that match does happen. You think Sasha's gonna be like, hey, you got this? Uh, but I. I thought in, towards the end, I believe she's like, I told you I had it. And I was like, when that was happening, I was thinking, oh, I bet you she's going to lose now. She's going to lose. And then I forgot what happened in the moment, but she didn't. I was like, oh, that would have been kind of funny towards like, I had it. And then she gets rolled up and she loses that part. Um, but yeah, I definitely liked having Savannah being highlighted the way she was tonight. Yeah, I was the one spot that kind of I caught that stood out was actually the other way around. It was Savannah running to Taya. And she just kind of leapt into Taya's arms to take what they call the blue thunder bomb. It didn't even look really like what I've come mm -hmm. to expect of a blue thunder bomb, thanks to Sami Zayn. But it, Taya just kind of stood there and just waited for Savannah to jump into her, and then turned with her. I was like, it, it, that wasn't really the most believable given Savannah's size. Like they talked about Taya and like showing off her strength in that, but I'm like, it didn't really look in the move that she had anything to do with it. She just redirected mm -hmm. Savannah's momentum as Savannah just ran and jumped into the fall. Yeah. I wanted to go back and watch that part exactly too, because it said blue thunder bomb. And I kept thinking, was that really one though? And I was like, I may have to go back and rewatch it. Cause I just wanted to like, keep going with the episode. But yeah, I, I got curious when that spot did happen as one well, then the one they yelled it out. Yeah. Um we did get after this match was done, we got a highlight package of Bullet Club Light, as I'm gonna call them. <laughs> um Ace and Bay just keeping them relative relevant in our minds, keeping them so we don't forget about them, showing us what they've been doing in Japan. They are now six and two in the Super Junior Tag League, which is huge. Um, if you haven't seen any of that or you want to catch up on that, I do recommend checking out Andre and Melball as on OLE Pods. They do a weekly recap of everything happening in NJPW and Stardom. Um, so they are on top of that and following everything Super Junior Tag League there. We get jump from that to a backstage uh, kind of chaos happening backstage mm -hmm. as Moose is in a stairwell beating down who I believe was Bupinder Gujar, but I couldn't really tell because he was in street clothes. I thought the same thing. I, was, I, kept, I kept going back to my iPad. I squinted. I was like, who's that supposed to be? Like, and sure I couldn't think of what he, sure. I was like, I was like, I think it's Bupinder. Hmm. I was like, and I took notes on it just in case. I was like, I know Cody's going to tell me later, but it took me a moment. I feel like a grandma, like I didn't realize it was there. <laughs> but um, We're not yeah, used to I thought seeing it was him funny. outside of his ring gear. No, it feels like the total different person. Like I would never recognize him. Um, but I thought, like, again, going back to, like, the photo shoot part, it just, like, reminds me again of NXT. It was, like, I, like, this was somewhere different, too. It wasn't something, like, I expected. And the way it happened, I was like, wait, what's happening here? And then not only that, but not recognizing him, it took me that moment, like... I was literally squinting. So even with my glasses on. <laughs> um, the only thing really to come out of this was Moose as sec security and production are trying to drag him off of Gujar. Moose says, um, deliver a message to Joe Hendry for me. Tell him it's time for him to believe in Moose. <laughs> no. It's an interesting way to go. Moose, as a, as the scumbag he is, makes sense as somebody who would just go and beat down somebody else to deliver his message, as opposed to finding Hendry himself. You know, all he has to do is say his name and he'll appear, then you beat him down, right? But mm -hmm. no, no, you got to go find somebody else completely unrelated and be like, tell him I'm looking for him. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. We're not alone in this, apparently. <laughs> but I don't know if it was the shot or even the clothing or the combination of the two, but yeah, I definitely feel like I was like, I know I've been lacking sleep, but is that really him? And it's just like a lot went through my mind. He had up there. <laughs> Mate, I don't know, but it just it took me a moment to realize it was him. So 
in my notes, I was going to put his name with a question mark and I'm just thinking, it's okay. Cody will confirm it for me later. <laughs> um, this was kind of a, a promo he heavy little bit we got there between mm -hmm. the highlight package, the moose segment. Um, and then we also got a delirious promo. Um, completely subtitled because apparently delirious doesn't speak in English other than impact wrestling. That's the only two words he said that actually were understandable. Everything else was in whatever language delirious speaks in. Um, and the only thing really that came out of this was he reflected back to when he came into wrestling and was with Eddie Edwards like 10 years ago. I believe he said before he even was wearing the mask back then. Because he, he kind of pointed and grabbed his mask and said, before I had this, I mm -hmm. saw you come in um, and request the match with Eddie Edwards. And then that was it. He said he'd be honorable mm -hmm. in the match, but he wasn't sure if Impact would be, or he wasn't sure if Eddie would be. I, I missed that. Couldn't tell. There too many pro, too much of a pronoun game for me to understand who he was talking about. Well, I can tell you one one language off the list. It was not Spanish. I'm telling you right now. So we can figure that out later. But it was not. Well, it wasn't um, Spanish, and we know he doesn't speak yeah. Japanese because you or Mora couldn't understand anything from him either. No, so there's two off the list. Already. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I thought it was funny because. I, I kept thinking from his standpoint, it's like, this is just a language he's created for himself and they have the subtitles. This is so funny because nobody will ever really understand him, no matter who he teams up with. So I thought that was funny from their standpoint. Um, but just like, I'm so used to like, whenever somebody speaks their native language, then you get the subtitles like, get to know your native language, nobody else's native language at the same time. Um but yeah, I like the promo itself and the subtitle just, I feel like they threw me off and they distracted me at first, but then I, I, I enjoy watching him. <laughs> oh my God. I, I would not be surprised at all, Barry, if PCO could somehow understand Delirious. Maybe Delirious can be the new Vincent that, you know, understands and contains the monster. That'll be funny. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll just, you know, somebody will be a big enough Delirious fan that they'll take and go full Klingon and get us an actual full translation of Delirious language. Mm -hmm. uh, after we get through the whole kind of row of promos there, we get to Khan versus Sammy. Um, and again, for the second time on the show, we get new intro music and a new entrance video, this time for Violent by Design. Uh, Diener comes out dressed in all white, a white jacket, white pants. Looks like he's got kind of a cleaner haircut. He doesn't have the, the yeah. same mohawk, fohawk look going on anymore. Um, they looked menacing the entrance, the intro with kind of Diener leading the group and the other two coming up, they just looked like something to be reckoned with mm -hmm. and made me really, really excited for the future. Like the opening video and kind of the way that was done and even the stuff last week, it, it's all kind of built up. And just every time VBD is on my screen right now, it has me excited. And more than anything, I feel like Diener is really evolving as a character and a performer and a member of this roster to somebody that I realistically could see. I know we've been pushing for Macklin as who we think is going to be mm -hmm. the next world champion. I think Diener is right behind him in line. I think Diener is somebody he's got to do a little bit to kind of really build himself up mm -hmm. and work through a lot of the roster to kind of put his name on that list. But right now where he stands with the way this story is built, he already has that gravitas to his the way he's carrying himself that I feel Diener is on his way to being a future world champion. Yeah, I yeah. So far, I thought that the presentation was really well done. It's exactly what they needed to be to give them that you know transformation and that look that we that they needed after last week. Um, I like how they kept pointing out through the whole match. It's like this is a three on one because even as Sammy's by himself, you know the guys are outside and even their presence alone is enough to affect the match and even uh there was a part of it that he i forgot what angels did to sammy and he's like oh angels is like even slowing down and doing things to like to point at sammy a certain way but like i kept just thinking through the whole thing i was like who are the ones that are really gonna i don't want to say save but like team up in that way with sammy later and take them on and I'll probably lose because i feel like whoever goes against him i, I guess the whole group I feel like the group needs that re like that transformation to be complete. They need to get those pick up those wins, 
like not only as tag teams but individuals too so i don't see them losing anytime soon so i figure you know next week if we do get the angels and sammy like they have it planned out i see angels winning and little things like that is showing how they're such a cohesive unit that having the three people in there not not only the person wrestling but the other two being at ringside the presence alone it helps them to get those pick up those wins to ensure that unity between the group as well so i, I thought it was uh, interesting when they pointed out those kind of things in commentary too yeah I, I the biggest takeaway from this match for me was the way they made con out to be a monster mm-hmm. everything sammy threw at him every hit he just shook it off he didn't take any damage he completely just like a fly buzzing at you that you can't get rid of he's like He's hitting him, and he's hitting him with all he's got. And Khan's like, <laughs> um, it, it it was a nice presentation for Khan. It was a nice way to kind of put us in in the seat of understanding where we're going with Khan now. That he is somebody who's going to take almost that role of what Doring was for VBD last year before his illness, and he had to take his leave now. Um, obviously wishing all the best for big Joe and hope to see him back sooner rather than later. But I feel like Khan is somebody now that can come in and fill that same role and believably be built up to be that monster behind. And the way the, the match ended where, you know, Khan had Sammy on the outside, Sammy starting to feel the numbers. He's kind of pinned towards the, the ring between Diener and, and angels and then Khan in the ring behind him. And he decides he wants a chair but when he grabs the chair, Angels takes and grabs it from him, walks around with the chair in his hand, taking the referee's attention onto him. Sammy tries to get back in and do something to Khan. Diener grabs his leg. Like the, the unspoken chemistry between these mm-hmm. three guys is really what won this match for Khan at the end of the day is that they didn't even have to talk about what they were doing. Angels knew his role. Diener mm-hmm. knew his role. Khan finished the job. Yep. And yeah, like you said, we did get later on confirmation that next week we're getting Sammy Callahan against Angels. Mm-hmm. Probably more of the same, but we'll see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. We get Josh in the back really quickly, heading towards the ring in full gear. Uh, Tommy Dreamer tries to stop him to talk to him. He says, I can't talk right now. I'm going to the ring. I mean, I don't know why we needed Tommy there. This could have just as easily been a, you know, coming up next kind of segment, but something that happened, Tommy wasn't entirely out of place. It just felt a little unnecessary to me. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a recap of BTI, which we already talked about, and then we get Gia Miller, Gia Miller going back into Trey Miguel's dressing room to talk to him about the match. She asks him about defacing the tag, or the defacing the belt, tagging the belt with the TM, um, and Trey spins it around on her in a clever way asks her defacing it so are you saying when I put the X division belt on my leg I was defacing my body um and she then asks him well it's kind of disrespectful don't you think and he grabs a spray like grabs the spray paint can and starts shaking it up and like you want to talk about disrespectful and then as he's shaking it his hand gets caught from behind we get crazy steve which is always impressive to me when a blind man can catch somebody's hand that well but (laughs) good on you steve Mm -hmm. um steve saves saves gia from being spray painted by trey tells trey that he considers himself an artist too but he paints in blood trey kind of scurries out of the room with his tail between his legs (laughs) i like a very very comment i said that every week what do we need tommy here (laughs) Very accurate. Pretty sure we've said that every week on this show too, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought this was interesting as well. This is, I feel like it adds a little bit more to Trey's character. I just ne- never thought of Steve coming in there. I just thought Gia was going to run away and that was it. Um, he did point out what he's, uh, Steve says, your actions have consequences. So I was like, I was wondering if they're going to announce something between them for next week. But so far, I haven't seen anything. But I thought that th- that line was really interesting between them. But just like I love how like how you said he turned it around on her. It's like, but me adding the title to my skin, nobody said anything about that though. But if I do it to the title, then people comment on it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a you know a clever way for him to like 
you know, turning around on them and the fans too. And it's like at this point, I'm waiting for Trey to just give us a form of like, you the people have done this to me and that you people kind of promo coming up soon, I feel like. Especially after uh, what happened during the match when he's like, I'm not going to do what you guys want me to do. I'm going to do my own thing. Um, but yeah, it's just like this changing character for Trey. I feel like it, it's interesting uh, to the storyline and to the division too. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if you caught on BTI today either, um, if you only watched the match. Earlier on on BTI, uh, Josh Matthews actually called out Gia Miller for that outfit she was wearing because she was wearing a black dress with the high collar with a necklace around it. And he pulled up a photo of the old rock photo with him in the, the black shirt with the turtle neck and the necklace around it. He's like, no. look, you guys, you guys dress alike. Oh, no. And I, I, that was all I was thinking through this segment too, when she was still there in that same dress. I was like, "Oh my god, it's it's the female rock." <laughs> uh, and Barry's coming crazy. Steve not often on the mic, but when he is, he's really good. Yeah, yeah. Crazy Steve is always great. I, I've really enjoyed him doing the intros for Black Truce because he just has that menacing thing to him. Mm-hmm. Um, IPWF throwback throwdown. I know we haven't touched on it tonight. There's a lot on tonight's show that we we wanted to talk about. Um, we might end up doing a special for throwback, but Crazy Steve always is kind of the ring announcer and the backstage interviewer for those throwback throwdowns as well. He 100% can play his character to a T. He talks absolutely great. And the man is legally blind. I, I will never stop shouting that from the rooftops. This man is legally blind, and he goes into the ring and puts on some of the best X Division matches you'll see as a blind man. <laughs> it, it 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 blows my mind. The man mm. is a talent that this world deserves to, to do better by. Mm-hmm. So, we're almost an hour into the show now, Astrid. Hour into our show and an hour into what Impact was at this point. Mm-hmm. We get Josh Alexander entering the ring. Josh comes out he issues in a world championship open challenge and describes that he only wants one man to answer this open challenge. That obviously being Bully Ray, because he wants Bully to answer to get his hands on him this week. If he loses, Bully will have the championship and Bully can go on and do whatever he wants. If Bully loses, he'll still get his shot at hard to kill. This is just Josh wanting an opportunity to get Bully now as opposed to waiting. Um, Bully shows up on the screen, refuses the challenge, says, you know, I don't understand what your point is here, Josh. You just wait. And I'm not about to go back on my word. And I told you I was going to call my shot. I called my shot. I'm not going to go against that to come and mm-hmm. see you fight you this week. That was all well and good. I didn't expect Bully to come out and actually do anything this week. Yeah. When we found out Josh was going to be on the show, you kind of had that feeling Bully wouldn't be anywhere to be found for him. Mm-hmm. This was all just kind of a, a vehicle in motion getting us to our destination. And once Bully leaves the screen and Josh is there kind of frustrated that Bully's coming to answer, we get speedball Mike Bailey. My opening comment on here was, I can't say this is the smartest move for speedball because Josh is a man on a mission right now. True. My God, was I wrong. <laughs> well, I'm glad you kept that note. <laughs> Oh my word! Um, yeah, and before we get into that, I also wanted to point out that when Bully's on the screen, though, he's talking about overdrive. He's like, "I got some pictures of you and your wife," and I'm like, "Uh, uh-uh, where is this going?" And then he starts showing up pictures from the attack from um, Overdrive to Josh. He's like, look, the happy couple. Like, I have you're holding your wife here after I had her, after I was holding her, and he's like, "Oh, look." Your wife's uh, head between my legs when I have her ready for a driver with the title that you gave me. And then he's like, oh, this is you doing this. And I was like, oof, those, those mind games from Bully just incredible he, to think about. When he was talking about the pictures, Josh's wife has put out some pretty good pictures this week. And that's what I thought we were getting. <laughs> I thought we were, they're going to be pictures from like Twitter. And then when he shows up the pictures from the attack, it's like, it would have been really funny if somebody just called them right about now. 
when yeah. the pictures were on screen. <laughs> um, but I just, I feel like it, it's an adds to another thing of like, this is like, uh, like I want to remember like my dirty work and this is the way of doing it. And even not only that, but the way he just, um, he tells him, I'm not going to go back on my word. And it keeps going back to what we said, you know, when the attack happens, like he kept his word. He told him he was going to shake his hand, say it to his face. And, and, you know, the way he said everything was going to happen, he said it and it happened that way. And I like how he's like, I'm on Breaking Bad World. Like, I'm going to wait until, the, you know, the pay-per-view happens. So I I just thought this is it. But at the same time, having Josh in gear, I knew who's going to have a match. But I didn't think who was going to be it or how long the match is going to be for either. <laughs> um, but, like, having people, I was like, holy crap. I kept thinking, Speedball just got to Impact not too long ago. His he killed it as exhibition champion and then just thinking of him facing Josh. And I went back and I was, I thought about it. And there's something they mentioned in commentary too. Don't forget. He actually signed his contract on Josh's back as well. So I think that Almost adds another thing. Almost yeah. a year to the day from mm -hmm. when this match was actually taped was when speedball signed his contract on the back of Josh Alexander and then debuted the next month in January of this year at, at the last hard to kill pay-per-view. Yeah, so I feel like that adds a, uh, to the story as well. But um, having people come out, I was like, I the the first thing running through my mind, the main thing was this is just such a way to highlight and elevate people. Like we've seen people as an incredible exhibition champion, and it's like you kind of think of him within the division, and you don't think of him outside that exhibition. So seeing him like take this opportunity, I kept thinking. Even, like, we know he's going to lose because we're, we're, they're not going to change Bully and Josh. But at the same time, the way people is going to get highlighted in this match is going to speak volumes of him. And not only of him, but, like, the way that like, the, the direction Impact has for him going forward. And Because this is something, like, even though we saw this tonight and it was incredible, I'm waiting for that moment we get to see this match, whether with the title or not, again. But with the storyline built up to it. Because, as we said, this was an open challenge. It was a storyline to it. But I would like to see something build up even further to give that foundation for a good feud between these two. Because if this was it, just having this one-off match, and it was incredible. Imagine if they had a storyline to it, too. Yeah, I mean, they, they told a hell of a story in the match itself. They didn't even need yeah. a build-up. This match did everything it needed to do. Um, early on, I had the note that I... Um, a lot of offense going for speedball really early. Josh really selling the pain from the overdrive match still, which I feel was mm -hmm. really weird. That match was almost three weeks ago at this point. Um, seemed odd that we were still talking about him like being sore from a match from three weeks before. Um, felt like it might have been better served if we played this as Josh just overlooking speedball en route to Bully, that he kind of overlooked his opponent or wasn't prepared for his opponent and had Bully on the mind and just couldn't focus on who he was actually wrestling. But then they started playing into the damage to his arm that they'd played up from the match at Overdrive is what was causing Josh to be able to hit the, sun, the, the C4 spike early. You know, there were a couple different points where it looked like he could have Speedball put away, but then just couldn't get him up for the C4. And then that's where this match kind of took the turn from great to amazing. Because at that point, my, my notes just started going, I can't wait to see them run this one back at a PLE in the future. This match is an absolute war between two of Impact's absolute best mm -hmm. um that i was questioning does this match get a clean ending where's macklin mm -hmm. and kenny king in this and it was like my mind was kind of going all over the place as a, i was wondering are we going 60 minute time limit are we going to see macklin mm -hmm. or or king come out and ruin this match for us are we getting a clean ending are we going to have you know a situation here where speedball is left in a position where he can get another title match sometime soon and then they started talking about the time. You get the 30-minute call. You get the 40-minute call. You get the 50-minute call. And at the 50-minute call, they just went all out. You have, like, Speedball going dead weight so Josh can't lift him. Um, he took an awful-looking fall out of the corner and slammed his head on the mat really hard. That one concerned me that I'm like, Ugh. you might want to be concerned about a concussion the way his back and head just whipped off that mat. Um you got an ultimate weapon, but Josh managed to get his foot on the ropes. You get uh, Bailey with a kicking combo, tries for a flamingo driver. Josh lands a Styles Clash into an ankle lock, which he laid down into and wrenched the ankle. Uh, Bailey still managed to get out of it. Um, 
you got the wicked rope pull up where um, Josh had Bailey on the ground who was kind of climbing the ropes with his hands and Josh whipped him up into a wicked looking pile driver. What do you say? What do you say about a match mm. like this? Like, it's not often you get a 60 minute war on free TV. Like this, this just blows my mind. You know that these two are going to be big names. They've both got contracts for quite a while in Impact. We are going to have to revisit this match for a PLE. What do you do to top this in the future? You just put on an hour-long televised program on your weekly show. How do you go to a Bound for Glory or a Slammiversary or whatever the case may be and put something bigger than this between these two? No, uh, before we keep going, I want to highlight Barry's comment. Uh, he said, great match. My only issue was I put too much effort in a couple of spots were a bit dodgy. Could easily have gone wrong apart from that match of the year contender. I feel like at this point, when the match kept going, I stopped taking notes because I felt like I was so focused on what was happening on screen that I didn't want to take away from that to take a note and then miss something. Um, but at the same time, it just I kept one thing that I kept noticing from Speedball is just even though he's new to the company, he was reversing a lot of Josh's moves. It's like, I know what you're doing next. And he got like ahead of him. Uh, like there was one of the big spots was like that reverse Rana. And when he did it, he looked at, like, gave that face of like, like, holy crap, I can't believe I did it kind of face. Um, but at, like, it's I just one of those things. And then there was a part where I think when he was getting about to hit the C4 spike, if I'm not mistaken, uh, like he just pulled down on Josh. So they went on the outside so he could reverse it that way and stop Josh from doing it. But I feel like it wasn't just like regular reversals. It just, he always found a way of like, I know what you're doing next. So I'm going to find a way to, for you not to hit it on me kind of situation. And I like that in the way that people was like acting smart in that sense of it. Um, yeah, and just I had seen Veda's tweet earlier today. She's like, "Oh, watch out!" Oh, they say, "Watch out for uh, tonight's episode." And when I when I saw the tweet, I kept thinking, "Something's gonna happen interesting with people tonight, isn't it?" And then seeing this, I was like, "Now I know what they meant when they tweeted that." But like I said, it's something interesting. And like I was telling you before we did the show. Um, there was a, towards the end, they were talking about the matches they have for next week, and they said, well, we were going to have Eddie versus Delirious tonight, but because of like how long the match is going for and the match is not over yet, we're going to move it to next week. And I like how that gives you like kind of a, of a way of thinking of like, oh, this the match was planned for tonight, but at the same time, because the open challenge has gone so, so long, they're moving it to next week, so it makes it look unplanned that the match has gone on for this long, which I thought was really interesting to point out on TV. Um, but yeah, just the chemistry between these two, it was incredible to watch. And I feel like not only do we know already that Josh is already a great champion and a great wrestler, but to go against people, like it highlights his people in such a way that I cannot see him like that. I went like if he was here and like a, a scratching the surface as X Division champion, like, like he just went above and beyond it now. Um, and just I kept I keep thinking of him in the like getting out of the X Division now. And getting involved with the world champion sooner or later, but overall, this was something I never, I didn't expect an hour match. I saw somebody's tweet, and I kept thinking, "There's no way this match is an hour." And as I kept, I was like, "Holy crap, it is an hour match." I felt exhausted for them, but at the same time, I I liked that even though it's an hour, like I was still like glued to my iPad as I was watching it. I didn't want to stop watching it. Like I said, I didn't want to even stop taking notes because I didn't want to miss anything that was happening. But the chemistry that they had was incredible. As people looked incredible. And I feel like it still elevates Josh towards the storyline of like, I took care of people tonight, but I still got bully rate to worry about in the back of my mind as this was happening. And I'm glad at the same time that nobody came in and interrupted it because I feel like it would have in a way tarnished the match and the way it was going and this, like the speed of it and the pacing. So I'm glad it happened the way it did. It's something unexpected. You don't, like you said, it's kind of when you think about a, a weekly show, you don't expect a match is like a whole freaking hour during just a regular weekly show. You expect that to happen at a paper review type of style, but overall, this match was like, shh, I, I need to I, watch it again, but it's still incredible. We got it a couple times last year where we had the Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson match in AEW, mm -hmm. or um, I think the other one was it uh, another Danielson match or another Omega match that we had. Or, with, uh, yeah, I but like, I mean, if, if, from their standpoint, but, though, if you think about it, they announced it ahead of time versus this is something like it happened as an open challenge and you like, you don't think they're, they're going to announce that the match is going to take an hour. Yeah. Like, that no, that's where really I was going happen. with that, right? That that we had mm -hmm. it, but both of those matches were announced that they were happening. We got told yeah. right off the bat for both matches that this is going to open your show. 
um, and it's going to have this amount of a time limit. And we all kind of went into those matches thinking, especially the second time they did it, like, oh my God, this is going to be another time limit draw. And so for this match, we got no announcement of it whatsoever. We didn't even know what Josh, Mm -hmm. like it just said, Josh was coming to address Bully Ray on this show. When he came out at kind of the end of the first hour there, I was like, okay, we're putting Josh here and then, you know, we're going to get into something else. I I didn't even remember Mm -hmm. if there had been anything else announced for the rest of the show or not. (laughs) If I had thought about it and realized that, you know, there's nothing else that they've really announced is going to be happening on this show, I might have tried to second guess or question it um, and think, okay, this, you know, this makes sense. This is going to be a big match and it's going to go the distance. But I fully expected with Macklin still running around, just destroying people, screaming from the rooftops how much he deserves a title match. With Kenny King going around trying to expose Mike Bailey, I'm like, somebody's got to interrupt here. When when Josh put the open challenge out, I was like, does Macklin accept this? Like, do we put Macklin in this position this week? That seems odd, and I'm glad they didn't, but it was in my mind at that point, too. But to get this as an unannounced match, we didn't know Josh was putting on an open challenge. We didn't know we were getting Josh Mm -hmm. versus Speedball. We didn't even know we were getting Josh in a match tonight. We just were told that he was coming to talk. So Mm -hmm. my question there, Astrid, is does this benefit impact to not promote this ahead of time to have this like like, unless you actively go looking for the taping Mm. spoilers from three weeks Mm -hmm. ago if you don't go out and hunt those down and you don't know this match is coming do you now go back to impact to find this match and Mm -hmm. watch it or if you know this match is coming does it bring in that audience ahead of time and actually have a bigger live following tonight of people coming to watch the show? Yeah, I feel like I'm half and half with that one because like you said, I I kept thinking I kept thinking in my mind, what else was advertised last week? Because I kept thinking, what else is next? Because I was not expecting the match to be this long. And then I kept thinking, I don't remember anything else happening. Like I feel like we had Heath and Ryan on the machine guns and uh Taya and, and Savannah, which was the biggest things they advertised. So I kept thinking, what am I missing? So I was not expecting this to be this long, but I feel like it benefits them in a way because I feel like so many people are gonna be talking and saying, like, oh holy crap, I just saw an hour match for his people and what and uh Josh, and you keep thinking seeing it on social media and the reaction for people i feel like it helps them in the end of that sense because people are going to be talking like we are a freaking hour-long match there's no way and they're going to want to check it out but i feel like at the same time like you don't advertise something like this a lot of people are going to miss out on it but i feel like impact has a good and loyal following um but yeah, it just like it reminds me of that. It just I feel like social media does help because I even tweeted like we have an hour long freaking match between uh, Speedball and Josh, and I had a friend uh, Steve from uh, t- from his own channel. He's like, wait, I gotta check that out. And then you see those little things that actually help. And I saw so many people like I see a few people like not only tweeting that but tweeting the gifts of like everything that was happening throughout the match. That I feel like when you keep seeing how long the match went for you're gonna want to check it out and see like how do you guys go for a whole hour on a weekly show and something that like i said it was on like from our standpoint as fans it was unannounced unplanned it just happened and like i said it just left the fact that they said during the match itself it's like oh we're gonna move the match that we have for tonight for next week because this is still going on and i feel like those little factors to it does help in the end because their following is gonna end up watching it i saw some people were active in the comments i was watching it on the youtube stream and like I said, social media does help. And just thinking of like so many people tweeting, there was an hour freaking match with barely any commercials. If you go on YouTube with the, between Josh and people, a lot of people are going to tune in to watch it. Yeah, you had Tom and Matt through this match too. They were they were talking about the fact that like the delirious and Eddie match getting bumped, but they also kept talking, especially once we got to that 30, 40 minute point. You know, we're here till this match finished. Thanks to our sponsors mm-hmm. at Impact T- in, or at Access mm-hmm. TV, we're staying with this match until we get a, a finish, until it's over. Um, you know, we're we're not going to cut you short. Once this is match is over, we're going to go over and we're going to show you the entirety of the NJPW FTR versus United Empire match. You know, we're, we're not going to cut that short because we run over. We're still giving you the whole program there. They were really selling and really making the realism come in here with, with it that, you know, this is an open challenge match. We didn't even know this match was going to end up happening. Mm-hmm. We had this other match planned was going to be your main event tonight. We're now bumping it to next week. We've got our sponsors at the TV station has our backs on this. We're going to stay with you. We're going to show you the whole match, the whole program. We're not going to leave you hanging. 
it really just owned that realism that you don't get so much in wrestling anymore. When you get a main event with 10 minutes left on any other program, you just expect, okay, well, we've got 10 minutes left. And even though this match did end up ending on time and they didn't run over, it it made you think that they're prepared. They, they know that they could run over on this and that they're going to make it happen and makes you wonder, are we actually going to end on time? Like, what's mm-hmm. going to happen here? Yeah, and going back to Barry's comment, I was on YouTube, it was o- only 15 minutes long. But like for us, at least if you think about it this way, we have no commercials while you're watching it on YouTube. So it's like, it's a whole 50 minutes of just watching it with no commercials too on top of it. Yeah, and there, so was, just like, there was 10 minutes of commercials on Access TV when I was watching yeah. it. And Impact has already tweeted, oh, shortly after the show ended, who wants the full match with no commercials and get to see everything that happened during the commercial yeah. breaks and stuff too. Yeah. Put it on, put it on. <laughs> um, speaking of that, uh, I'm going to get to Barry's other comment here in a second, but I did want to go back to what you had spoken earlier and, and Josh trying to hit the C4 spike and Bailey always seeming to have an answer for it. There was the one other spot where Josh actually got him up And then his shoulder gave out. That was one of the scary kind of dodgy spots that could have gone Mm. really wrong where he kind of let go and Bailey just dropped and and fell really hard there. That seemed like a really awkward spot. Um, And then the whole match was just that, just that of him trying to get that C4 spike in and Mm -hmm. Bailey always having the answer or his arm not having the strength in that moment. And when we finally get to the end and he finally gets him up and drills him with that first C4 spike and just holds on, doesn't go for the pin. He just leaves Bailey in a crumpled heap between his legs for a second, picks him back up and drills him with the second makes Bailey look that much more difficult that Josh had to land two C4 spikes in succession to put him down for good in the final we got a 30 second warning from or or possibly even a 20 second warning before the Mm -hmm. pin was counted that you've got 15 seconds or so left in the match before we're done that josh went 59 45 after roughly a 40 minute match a few weeks back which was technically only two days before when you look at the tapings he went 40 and an hour in a three-day span it's no wonder the man needed a month off before the tapings and kissing me this weekend Mm -hmm. Ew, we get a raid. I don't know from who, though, so let us know where you came from. Thank you, everybody, for coming over. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, Thanks a lot for popping in, guys. We're just talking the main event, yeah. the the Josh Alexander and Speedball Mike Bailey match on Impact tonight that just happened as they went to a near 60-minute war over the Impact World title on, on an open challenge match. Oh, that's cheating. I was in a rage, you Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Mike ended the stream early. We're taking too long, oh, Astrid. <laughs> dang it. I had a plan. Thank, thanks a lot though, Mike. We appreciate since you're here. We're gonna throw that shout out right now. Mike the Bref is our excellent um assistant and helper and kind of <laughs> co-sponsor of the show. You'll see it right down here. The backbreaker video logo. Check us out on the replays Monday afternoon if you can't catch our impact. Uh, recaps on the Thursdays live. We do do making an impact, recapping all things impact wrestling. Um, Mondays are the the replay of it on the Backbreaker Video mm-hmm. YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm like that's not fair. I have planned to radio you already. I had it ready to go. <laughs> now I'm thrown off guard and dang it. I have to find somebody else. I thank you, Mike. I appreciate you. <laughs> um. After the show was done, though, Impact has released, and I'm going to talk about it because it's out there, on Impact's Twitter, they put out behind the scenes of Josh and Mike Bailey coming backstage to a standing ovation, basically, from the Impact locker room. Everybody from Scott Demore to the roster itself were back there standing and applauding and cheering them on as they came back through Gorilla. Josh comes through, gets the pats on the back, gets a couple of hugs, goes on his way. Speedball comes through and you get Kenny King there making a big show, chanting for Speedball and shouting and wooting and um, basically going full, full woo girl Kenny King back there. And Mike kind of stops short. Kenny continues to try and get people like, come on, guys, it's Speedball, it's Speedball, cheer him on, he's, he's Speedball. Takes a drink of his bottle of water and then just sprays it Triple H style into Speedball's face, knocks him down, and it ends up being kind of a pull apart where they have to yank him back and keep him away from Speedball. Um, 
plays off the fact that I was expecting the the attack from Kenny the whole time. You can kind of mm-hmm. see, uh, I think Kenny really kind of, to begin with, came off as somebody who appreciated the match that had just happened and then remembered that he had a problem with speedball and had to make a big deal out of it. I, I'm happy to see this story didn't get forgotten in all of this, that we're still going mm-hmm. forward. I still think Kenny King is a fantastic performer in and of himself. I think this just sets up an even better matchup between Kenny and Speedball in the future now that we've put Mike Bailey over in this way against the world champion. Yeah, at the same time, I'm glad. I wish I would have done this towards the end of the show as well instead of just releasing it on social media because I feel like it adds to the story. But I am glad it happened after the match and not during it. Like I said, I didn't want this match to get interrupted at all because it was going so well. Uh, but yeah, I just I feel like it it just gives you that mindset of like we had this great match, but don't forget what's happening between these people and Kenny right now. And I feel like this was something that needed to be done, and I'm glad they did. And Barry, going back to your comment, I, I would, but I have to wake up early tomorrow. I got an interview to record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can if do the show again, or you can find us on Astrid's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Astrid Pizarro. Go and check out the whole show there, or check back in on Monday if you want to catch what you missed uh, of the show when it pops up on Backbreaker Video and support Mike's platform there that he lets us put our show on every week. Yeah, recommended by the champ Trey, because there's no big O anymore. <laughs> Making an impact acknowledged by the X Division champion. I I can honestly say I feel a little bit like Roman Reigns now that I have been acknowledged. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) What a show. What a match. What a night of wrestling on this impact show. I know last week we talked that it seemed a little light on the matches they announced that all we really had was the tag title match and the Savannah mm-hmm. and, and Taya match were announced ahead of time. Now mm-hmm. we understand why. Now I understand mm-hmm. why Trey was bumped to BTI tonight because that, that match between Trey and Jason Hotch easily could have been a main roster show. Um, it was bumped for time because we got a fantastic world title match in its place on the main show. And obviously Trey will be back to his place on the main show again next week. Um, We get angels versus Callahan next week. We get potentially Heath and Rhino versus motor city machine guns again. Not Mm. quite sure about that one. Uh, It was on a graphic on the TV. Maybe it's happening. Maybe it was a technical difficulty. We'll never know. Um, (laughs) And then Eddie Edwards versus delirious, which got bumped from this week to next week. Mm-hmm. Impact Wrestling is doing amazing things right now. We have had week after week after week of fantastic shows. I don't think, other than the Taylor Wilde stuff, I don't think we've really knocked on anything mm-hmm. that we have seen on Impact Programming in the 10 episodes that we are up to of doing Making an Impact now. Highly recommend you check it out. It's super cheap on the YouTube channel, still super cheap on Impact Plus. And now if you've got a DAZN, if you're a sports fan at all and you're watching anything on DAZN, you can obviously check out all of their content on DAZN as well. Check it out and then pop back here every Thursday night and join our conversation about it with us. Yeah, and I agree with this comment. Impact is consistently putting on great shows. Yeah, I feel like in that sense, Impact is always underrated and forgotten about. And they're not really in the conversation with the big leagues. But I feel like some people need to realize that they are consistent with what they do. They highlight everybody so well. I feel like it reminds me a lot of how NXT handles their shows as well. Because we usually get at least one or two women's matches and a couple women's segments through the night. Uh, they highlight the exhibition well, the world title, and there's a little bit of everything going on, which I really like. That it's not just certain people being on TV and forget about everybody else. Um, but like I said, I watch it on YouTube. It starts at 8.30 and it has no commercials. We only get the usual commercials from like Impact themselves promoting their own shows. So it's like, you don't get bored of watch because you don't get boring commercials either. And like having this match like continuously is like having to take the iPad with me wherever I went as I was watching this tonight. Um, but it just it's nice to like not have those commercials either because you don't break up from that concentration of the match itself. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cheap to do. I've been having the membership since we started the show. Um, yeah, and not only that, but you can still go back and watch like the old episodes. So if you missed anything, you can just rewatch the old ones from there as well with no commercials too. And um, most of the pay per views are part of that as well. I think like the usual big ones are the ones that only include, which is you know reasonable. But everything else is still like like Overdrive that just happened. That's still part of on the YouTube stream as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where can people find you, Astrid? 
Uh, you can find me on my Twitter, which is like my name there, Astro Pizarro. Um, I do have my interview with Molly that I am recording tomorrow, so I'll probably release it sometime next week. So yeah, former uh, member of NXT UK. I'm really excited for that one. Um, you can find me usually on Tuesdays on taking over with Parrish and or Ed, because I would to say both in case Parrish just return. Um, aside from that, you can find me on my Instagram, which is astropizarro 20 And then back here with you, making an impact on Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. So like we said, if you don't watch it, you can watch it on my stuff later on Backbreaker Media for the replay as well. And uh, Mel and I just did our live show last week. I had to think about it. <laughs> From Ladies Wrestling Showcase, um, we talked about our top five uh, wrestling influences of the women. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice discussion that we had for that episode. And on the weekends, I did one woman, Women's Wrestling Talk NXT review. There you go. Where can the people find you, sir? I mean, you can find me. I mean, you, you took it off the screen right there. So I'm going to acknowledge Barry first because, yes, Impact okay. is just different. Things like the comedy, it works, fits the style of the show and exactly what, what Barry wants. There's so much to be had. There's excellent wrestling. There's comedy. There's violence. There's brutality. There's fantastic storytelling. You've got a management figure in Scott Demore who knows his role, knows when he needs to be more and knows when he needs to be less. You've got lesser known talents that are coming in and making names for themselves. Um, local independent scene wrestlers who maybe have made names in their regions and their territories coming and trying to find their way to the bigger stages. So much to be seen, so much to be had. And then obviously your Heaths and your Rhinos and your guys who maybe have been at the big stage coming back down and, and bringing their experience back down to help the younger levels grow as well. For myself, you can find me right here at Cody Defoe on the Twitter, on the Twitch. Um, obviously, my Twitter is my more active social media profile right now. I don't use my Instagram enough to bother following me there. I follow other people and comment on other people's stuff. I don't really put anything out there to be worth following on my Instagram. I'm here every Thursday night making an impact with the wonderful host of the show, might as well put her out there. I, I try and host, but we know she's the natural. Check her out. Follow her profiles. Follow her socials. Follow her shows. Astrid asks. She is one of the best female wrestling interviewing people out there right now. Ladies Wrestling Showcase with Mel Ball is doing wonderful things every week for the future of ladies wrestling. She's on the Tuesday night t taking over, turning over, whatever we call that show, taking over, right? <laughs> it's not nxt that's for sure <laughs> yeah talking nxt wrestling though you you talk nxt wrestling you talk impact wrestling we've had you doing aew wrestling you talk ladies wrestling you're all over the place you are really the star of the show i couldn't be happier to have anybody else on this show with me every thursday night and if you want some great wrestling talk talking impact wrestling check out the x division champion approved making an impact <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah if you haven't yet just make sure to uh follow on the twitch and to scrap on the youtube so you can get to see everything and you can share it as well um if you find anything you like that you may want to show our exhibition champion you can clip it and send it to him at this point because he knows about us apparently um but yeah we're just working on things as, as they happen um but yeah just really fun to do be doing this i I felt a lot of love for Impact for a while, but just doing the show with you, I, I started falling in love with Impact all over again, so I cannot not watch it now. It's part of my routine at this point. Um, but no, it's always like really like happy to do like different shows with different people. And like you said, I talked about NXT and I watch AW almost regularly at this point and Impact too, but I feel like I wish I had more time to do more wrestling, but this is it for me. Um, I hopefully don't do any more than this. Um, but yeah, I just I love doing the shows and just talking to different people on like what we think. And I'm glad that at least from my experience, it hasn't been negative. We get to talk, you know, having a civil conversation about what we like, what we don't like. And I like doing that with everybody that I work with uh, so far from like from yourself to Ed to Parrish and Mel, who are the people that I work with the most. Very happy that I get to work with my friends in this sort of setting and we get to work with each other in different ways too. So it's always nice to do this kind of shows. Uh, but yeah, for those of you that came in from Mike's Raid, if you haven't yet, just make sure to uh, follow at least on the channel so you know what we come in live next time. 
um yeah you never know someday we'll we might remember for uh the big paper we'll do the shows on fridays to do the paper reads as well uh but usually we're here on thursdays talking about impact we do all the throwback throwdown i haven't been able to watch it yet so we owe you guys that review hopefully next week uh, I, I definitely need to go to bed so i haven't seen that yet um i need to get some rest but i do have to watch it i'm excited to watch it i feel like my notes are going to be so confusing at first because the first time i watch it <laughs> but hopefully next week we'll talk about it and cody will guide me on this because i have no Barry idea what's going on that is apparently a great show but both of us have been otherwise occupied haven't got a chance to get through it all yet um I am going to shout out the same way I do every week. Thank you very much to everybody who hopped in the comments there, whether it was just to announce the raid to us, whether it was joining the conversation, Barry, as you always do every week, uh, Carl with Turnbuckle Studios, the McG, Mike, Mike the Ref, HPC Too Sweet, Bobby Batito, always happy to see you guys in there. Always appreciate comments and joining our conversation. Happy to, to bring your thoughts into the show with us and have you as a part of our show and our conversation come back next week join in we'll love to see y'all again we're gonna hit that 98 number whether trey miguel believes it or not <laughs> gosh <laughs> yeah we'll get those 90 views eventually but we'll keep working on that uh, but no thank you trey for the shout out you know and hopefully more people get to see his shout out next time too um but other than that um we'll see you all next week for another episode of making an impact mm -hmm.